Hello, welcome to my channel. In this video I'm going to talk about modding, how to do it, and what to be careful of so you can start modding your game as painlessly as possible. While this video was made with Fallout in mind, these modding steps should apply to pretty much any game. So should you mod Fallout 4? Yes, absolutely. If you're watching this video, then I take it you're already tempted by some of the popular mods available, or you just feel like something might be missing from your game. Modding Fallout can be extremely fun, but it can also be a headache if done wrong. Adding lots of various changes can easily lead to a loss of stability and unpredictable results. There are many steps you can take to save time, frustration, and even having to troubleshoot issues in the first place. Here is how to get started the right way. Step 1. Use a mod manager. In order to keep your game folder clean and avoid irreversible damage to your game files, make sure you grab a mod manager. The best one for Fallout 4, in my opinion, is Mod Organizer 2. I have a step-by-step -step tutorial on installing and setting it up if you need it. Properly utilizing a mod manager is going to allow you to easily enable your mods and disable them again when troubleshooting compatibility issues. It also makes sorting load orders a simple task in order to make sure you always get the results you are looking for. You may think it's simpler to just manually install a couple mods, but it's always worth it in the long run to have a mod manager. The time spent setting it up will save you more than that in the long run. Step 2. Always keep a clean save file while adding mods. What this means is making sure you have a good save file to fall back on if you've created some game-breaking bug. Like most people, you're probably in the middle of your playthrough and have potentially hundreds of hours with settlements needing your help. Thanks, Preston Garvey. Protect that time investment and make sure your mods all work properly before saving anything. And that's how it's done. Step 3. Test your mods. After making a clean save and potentially disabling autosaves, Make sure to thoroughly test all of your mods for function and stability. Keep in mind, the more mods you install, the more chances that they may conflict with one another, so take your time testing all the functions of each mod. Step 4. Install your mods individually or in small batches. This way you can more easily narrow down which mod is the one causing issues. Retest related mods if you're even slightly suspicious there might be a conflict with a previous mod you've already tested. Step 5. Do not uninstall mods mid-save. Some mods have no scripting and no plugins and are perfectly safe to add, change, or remove mid-save. Others are script-heavy and require a special uninstall script to remove. Some will just straight up break your game because there's no safe way to remove them. This is the primary importance of testing your mods before overwriting your save files to make sure you want these mods in the first place. You can safely remove any of the mods you added if they don't do what you want them to, unnecessarily clutter your build menu, or are just not fun to use. Once you've passed your testing phase and continued with your save, just don't remove or modify your mods unless absolutely necessary. There are exceptions to this, but it's a general rule that's going to keep you out of trouble. Step 6. Disable automatic updates. Updates can be useful. Sometimes it adds great new features, or sometimes it fixes known bugs. It can also introduce instability in a heavily modded game. Maybe the patch was perfectly working with a vanilla Fallout, but yours is no longer that. Or maybe it was a sloppy patch, like this latest so-called next-gen crapola. Protect your time investment by making sure your game will launch every day the same it did the last by disabling automatic updates and only update when you consent and are willing to update all the mods that require it. Step 7. Make sure to sort your load order for the best results. As mentioned earlier, the difficulty of this task is greatly reduced by using a mod manager. There are two separate load orders that need to be sorted. Loose file load order and plugin load order. When it comes to loose files, the ones loaded last always overwrite the ones loaded first. The mods that take priority will be on the bottom of the load order with a higher number. When it comes to plugin load order, the opposite is true. The plugin that takes priority is the first to load. 
Conflicting plugins loaded after will be effectively ignored. The two most popular mod managers, Mod Organizer 2 and Vortex, both have a plugin load order sorter built in called Loot. Now that you've got the basics of modding, let's go over a few do's and don'ts that might save you some time and frustration down the line. Do install multiple texture files, even if some of them are conflicting. On a scale of modding mistakes, this is relatively harmless, and pretty much the worst you can do is end up with mismatched textures from different mods. Don't install a higher quality than your system can handle. This may seem self-explanatory, but I wanted to mention it anyway. If, like me, you only have a 4GB video card, but you want to have the highest quality, installing all the cool 4K texture packs may be good at first, and very tempting, but the longer you play, the more problems you may face, like stuttering, flickering textures, all the way to the dreaded crash to desktop. Do try to keep the textures to 1 or 2K if you are worried about performance. Yes, they will still look better than vanilla Bethesda textures, and even at the same quality might perform better due to better compressions. Do install multiple conflicting mesh files. On the scale, this is also relatively harmless. Your mod manager is only going to show up the last conflicting mesh on the load order, and all you're wasting is space and the little performance you sacrifice having to process files that aren't even being used. Don't expect good results every time if mixing different mesh and texture packs without sorting your load order. Having one modded mesh overwriting another mod with custom textures may lead to some real strange visuals in-game. That being said, the biggest downside is a sharp, throbbing pain in your eyes when you realize what you've done and can be easily fixed. Don't combine multiple mods that edit the same cells. While this isn't the most harmful on the scale, it's likely to cause unpredictable results. In the past, this was also partly responsible for triggering the dreaded cell reset bug. Bethesda supposedly fixed this, but it used to be responsible for clearing every container in a cell, specifically those in settlements that are supposed to keep their contents. Unless you combine the two mods with Wirebash, avoid having two editing the same cell, such as multiple Castle Restored mods. Don't install too many script-heavy mods. The Fallout 4 engine is well known for having scripting issues, even unmodified. There may already be script lag apparent in conversations with NPCs or completing quest objectives. Adding multiple script-heavy mods may compound this issue and cause quest objectives to fail to update, particularly mods that add scripting that runs around the clock, as some mods have scripting that resolves quickly and makes no real difference in game performance. Don't install multiple conflicting plugins. The game engine will only accept the first plugin in the load order when it comes to conflicts, but if too many plugins make the same edits, the engine will actually in effect ignore all of them. Don't go over the plugin limit. There is a hard cap of 255 for most plugins, unless they're ESL plugins or ESL flagged. Many newer mods have ESL flagged plugins, but any of the older ones that haven't been updated are going to add to your plugin limit. Now, you can edit plugins to make them ESL flagged, but this is not necessarily for beginners, and if done with an existing installed mod, will have the same negative effects of uninstalling the mod mid save. I hope this guide helps you to get started and avoid some of the mistakes I've made throughout the years modding my Fallout and Skyrim games. If you need assistance getting Mod Organizer set up or disabling the automatic updates through Steam, I'll put the links to those videos in the description. My Mod Organizer tutorial is a two video series and the third really only pertains to setting up and using Body Slide. Sorry in advance if they bore you to death, but they were my first videos. If you're not sure which mod manager to use, I'm currently working on a video comparing the most popular two, Mod Organizer and Vortex. If you're thinking of using Nexus Mod Manager, don't. Trust me. If you have any questions, concerns, or just straight up think I'm wrong, let me know in the comments below.
Thank you so much for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps out my channel. And as always, happy modding.